couple of weeks. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, your cell phone, your PDATs, your mobile devices, I want you to turn your Bibles to uh, Philippians chapter number chapter number 3, starting at verse 12. Amen. I'm going to start verse 13. And we're just going to read this one text here. We ask that you stand for the reading of God's word. Philippians chapter number 3, starting at verse 13. And when you have it, say amen. And if you're not there, you say, Pastor, give me one second. Amen. Philippians chapter number 3, starting at verse 13. The Bible says, here begins the reason of God, Holy Word. It says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me. Somebody said, leave it behind you. Come on, say it with some conviction. Say, leave it behind you. Look at the person across the room and say, neighbor, leave it in the past. And it says, and reach forth unto those things which are before you. It says, verse 14 says, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Family, I'm going to talk to you this morning for the next few moments using as a subject, turn the page. Turn the page. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you for this time in your presence. Thank you, God, for all that has transpired thus far. Thank you, God, for your people. I thank you, God, that you've allowed us to come back into your house, Lord. I pray that you will just meet us at this particular juncture in the service. I thank you, God, for this word that will illuminate, that will empower, that will strengthen, and that will encourage your people. I pray that as I minister this word, God, hide me behind your cross and let no flesh get glory. As I minister your word, God, let your people be edified. You will be glorified, and most importantly, the enemy will be horrified. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Turn the page. So, you know, as I was... Uh, contemplating and preparing for this particular message, I begin to think about my life and I begin to think about life in general. And so as I was planning and preparing, uh, the Lord just allowed me to take out. So one of the things that I do whenever I prepare for a word, I take out many different types of books. I take out books on uh, definitions of scripture. I take out books on interpretation and so I have all these books in front of me and as I'm reading and as I'm studying and as I'm preparing I'm doing something that is assisting me with getting the information and what I'm doing is as I come to the end of one page I turn to the next page are you with me I turn so anybody in here are avid readers anybody read in here you read books before and so if you if you read books before you know that when you get to the end of the page you have to actually turn the page in order to get the next bit of information or to continue the story that you're on right and so I parallel that to our lives and what I was doing as God was showing me he said Tobias what I'm finding is that so many people, whether it's saved or unsaved people, they get stuck in pages in their lives. They get trapped in pages in their lives. And here's the thing about life. The thing about life is when you are stuck in a certain chapter in your life, all you do is focus on that chapter. All you do is sit and, and rest and marinate in the chapter. And God said, Tobias, what I need my people to do is I need them to understand the importance of turning the page in their life. Have you ever thought about um, the amount of time you spend on a daily basis, the amount of time you spend trying to rectify the wrongs in your past. I, I want you to let that sit. Think about the amount of time you do or try to rectify. Oh, if I would have did this, if, if I would have said that, if I, if I would have did this that way. You spend so much time trying to rectify the wrongs of your past. And, and I'm finding people exhaust so much energy and effort trying to rectify their past. But here's the catch 22. They never spend that equal amount of time and effort into preparing for their future 
or sustaining their life as it is right now. You put more effort into trying to fix your past than you do with trying to prepare for your future or to sustain your current state or your current life right now. And people are often derailed from their destiny simply because they've allowed their past to become the drivers of their final destinations in life. They've allowed their past to become the drivers of their final destinations in life. And this is exactly where we find Paul at in the text this morning. We find Paul at this critical juncture in his journey. While in prison, Paul writes this letter known as an epistle to the church of Philippi. He's in prison. And, and, and while he's in prison, he's now going through his life. He's, he's revisiting the decisions and the choices and the things that he's done. And he's writing this letter to the church of Philippi. And the reason why this church was so significant for Paul was simply because this church was the very church, the first church that he established after he was incarcerated. So he had an affinity to this church. And he wanted to articulate to this church the process that God was taking him through while he was in prison. Let me talk and park right there. There are times in our lives where we're going to be at a place that we feel that we are stagnant. We're going to be at places in life, whether it's in our careers, whether it's in our relationships, whether it's in our desire for educational advances, whether it's in, in our financial uh, equity, how we want to grow. There are going to be times in your life where you're going to feel like you are stagnant. But those are not moments in your life where you focus on your stagnation. Those are moments in your life where you need to ask yourself, what is God trying to show me in this season of my life? See, because God is intentional about things that he does. And what I found to be true about God, God will never allow you to turn the page in your life until you are able to learn what he was trying to show you in that period of time. Because here's the thing, just like reading that book, the things that are transpiring in one chapter of the book is critical for your understanding, your comprehension of the next chapter of the book, right? So God is saying, in order for me to get you to the place where you're ready to transition out of what you're in, you got to be able to retain and to learn and to digest everything that I'm trying to show you at this chapter in your life before you're able to turn the page. So part of Paul's objective was to call their attention to the potential pitfalls that are associated with one's inability to move on beyond their past as it relates to our disappointments or even some of our accomplishments. That was his objective. He wanted to, to let them know that there's some things that you have to do. And if you don't do these things, you're going to get stuck where you are. So he wanted to bring their attention to the importance of the pitfalls, the dangers, the mistakes that are associated with you staying at one place and not being able to move on from that particular situation. He understood that when it comes to life, when it comes to life, and don't miss this, when it comes to life and, and kingdom building, there are some things that we have to retain as part of the process. But then there are things in our lives that we have to put expiration dates on. Did you hear that? There are some things that you need to keep, but then there are some things that you have to put expiration dates on. And if you think about an expiration date, everybody in here went to the store before and bought some groceries, right? One of the groceries that I just really despise because it expires like on the date is bread. When you buy it, it's almost like bread just waiting for it. He's like, eat me now, eat me now because I'm going to expire on that day, right? So you know that the moment that day comes around, if you look at the latter part of the bread, you know, not in the front of the bread, because in the front, I think they do something to the bread in the front. But when you go to the back of the bread, you see all the little green stuff. So you know that that bread has expired. And watch this. 
it's no longer edible, right? Why? Because the condition that it's in will cause you to be sick. So God is saying that in your life, there are things in your life that you have to put expiration dates on. Why? Because if you continue to consume those relationships, if you continue to consume those people that put you down, if you continue to connect with people that are not going anywhere, if you continue to connect with people that don't empower you or push you, what's going to end up happening is those people are going to end up causing you to get sick. Are you with me? So Paul is saying that you have to get to the place where you're putting expiration dates on relationships and things. And here's the thing about people. is that we are prideful. There are some things that we don't want to put expiration dates on because they serve a carnal purpose. Stay with me. They serve a carnal purpose. Why? Because I get gratification out of that thing. What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm going to go there. Even when it relates to relationships, I can't get rid of that because I get pleasure out of that. But God is saying the longer you spend with that thing that has not been ordained by me, all it's going to do is cause you to develop a sickness and after a while, you are going to have food poisoning. And what's going to end up happening is that thing is going to detour your entire life simply because you did not get rid of it. Somebody say, I got to put an expiration date on those things. What are those things? You know what it is. So, 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 so there's this statement that I heard of before that we are, we are either moving forward, we're, we're either standing still or we are falling behind. That's what's, and you're either moving forward in life, you're either standing still, you're falling behind. And there, there's a lot of truth to that statement because people often become complacent or comfortable with where they are in life. And all it is, is a precursor to standing still. See, complacency is the enemy of success. Complacency is the enemy of success. The moment you stop learning is the moment you stop growing. The moment you stop aspiring for more is the moment that you put a limitation on your possibilities. The moment you start believing that God can and he will is the moment you allow the enemy to dictate who you'll become. Are you with me? Complacency is the enemy of success. And so what happens is when you do that, you don't realize that, that by becoming complacent, you're now becoming stationary. You're now becoming stationary. And what's happening, it, it's like a car at the stop. Have you ever been at a stoplight and, and the light changed green and that person just still standing there? And what's happening? Everybody's honking. Eh, eh, they're honking, right? Because they're like, you either got to get it going or move to the side. But what ends up happening? What ends up happening is after a while, people go around them. So when you become stationary, what ends up happening is people around you start getting ahead of you. They start moving ahead of you, and what ends up happening, you start to fall behind. Let me put it in context so you can comprehend it. When you are stationary, you will see people that started out in the same job you at, you are, at the same position, all of a sudden, a year later, they're in a management role. When you become stationary, people that you saw went from an apartment, and you were in an apartment, all of a sudden, now you see them, they're inviting you to their housewoman. Why? Because you stayed stationary. People who say, you know what, I need to get my life together, I need to get my finances in order. You saw them when they were in debt, their credit score was 420, but in three years time, you were just trying to spin, 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 while they were in the desert being hidden, and all of a sudden now their credit score is 800, but you still stuck at 450. That's you staying stationary with where you are. So when you remain stationary, what ends up happening is people start to get ahead of you. Does that make any sense? So Paul recognizing this possible outcome as it relates to, to us being stuck 
where we are as it relates to us being stuck and positioned in our past. And so he appeals to this church in verse 13. And he says, he says, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are what? Behind me. And reaching forth to those things which are before me. And so what Paul is referring to is forgetting those things in our past that would hinder us from moving forward in life. Forgetting those things in our past that would hinder us from moving forward in life. That's what he said. Things like past offenses. Someone offended you. Like, like past hurt. Right? Like past disappointments. Like, like past failures. And, and for some people, for some people, it even comes to past accomplishments that you made in your life. See, because sometimes some of us get so hung up on what we achieve that we get stuck there and think that that achievement was the plateau. But I want you to know God has so much more for you. You can't get stuck at that last achievement. You have to keep driving and searching for more. But some people get so stuck on even their last accomplishment. In other words, he didn't want them to get to the place, and don't miss this, he didn't want them to get to the place where their past disappointments or their past achievements will cause them to become prideful. See, because the Bible says that after pride cometh what? Comes fall, right? So, so you got to be careful that even as you start to achieve things in your life, that you don't become prideful. That you don't get caught up on what you've achieved. Because the moment you start to get prideful, you are don't what you don't realize you're doing, you are now in the background, you're creating a shrine. Stay with me. You're creating a shrine. And what, what's gonna end up happening is that you're gonna start worshiping your accomplishments. So when everybody see you, the first thing they see, they're not, you're not going to introduce yourself as a person. You're going to say, hi, my name is Dr. So-and-so. My name is Professor So-and-so. My name is... So you're no longer identifying yourself as just being a regular person. You identifying yourself by the accomplishments. And so that is a way you got to be careful that you don't allow yourself to become... So prideful to where you becoming an idol worship of oh, idol worship of, of your own successes in life. Unfortunately, many of us are becoming trapped into this mindset of being prideful because of the things that we've achieved. And, and what ends up happening is some of us even stop serving God because He's allowed us to come into that wealthy season of our lives. I, I can't tell you how many people I've seen God bless in a, a supernatural way. Financially, if you take inventory of your life, you know some people that you see God turn some things around, whether it was healing, whether it was finances, and all of a sudden, they don't want to serve God anymore. They don't want to come to church anymore. They don't have time for God. Why? Because now the thing that God blessed them with has now become the thing that has taken over their life. But I want you to know this morning that God is a jealous God. And what will end up happening is God will strip you of that very thing because he said, I will not have any other God before me. And so I want to put a disclaimer out there. If you don't already know, there is nothing in your life that should supersede your passion, desire, and commitment to God. Nothing. Because the moment you do, you will be entertaining idolatry worshiping in your life. And God says that I blessed you not for the purpose of you worshiping, but for you to see that when you serve me, 
that I will make a table for you in the presence of the enemy. When you serve me, the cattle on the hill belong to me. When you serve me, I will bring you into your wealthy season. But you got to understand that when you get there, it's not a time for you to forget me. It's a time for you to remember what I've done for you and allow your life to be an example for other people so they can see this is the benefit of being a kingdom citizen. Are you with me? The Bible says that, that, that so Paul asks this question. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. I'm going to forget those things that are behind me. And I'm reaching forth unto the things that are behold, before me. That's why the Bible reminds us in Isaiah chapter number 55, verse 3. It says, it says, incline your ears and come to me. Hear that your soul may live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Don't allow the emotion of your past to be a stumbling block that trips you up in your life journey. Did you hear that? Don't allow the emotions of your past to become a stumbling block the enemy uses to trip you up in your life's journey. Long before Paul was known as Paul, his name was Saul. And the Bible says that Saul was an effective persecutor of the saints of God. Saul was so bad, and I'm not using bad in a nice way. I'm using bad as the way it was intended to be. The young people use bad in a different way. I'm going back to the original context. Saul was so bad that Saul would, would, would go after and search for Christians just to torture them. He would go and search for people that say they belong to Christ, that they were Christian believers, so that he can crucify them and put them before everybody so, so that he can dehumanize them and get people to become scared and, and just uh, begin to incite fear in their life because he wanted them to understand that when you serve Jesus, you're not going to win. This was Saul. This was Saul. If he was in the modern times, he probably would have been some type of gangster back then. But look what happened. So, so his past was ugly. Like, like some of us, right? His past was ugly. But on the road to Damascus, he had an encounter with Jesus. And when you have an encounter with Jesus, he not only pardons you from your past, but don't miss this. He rewrites your name. When you have an encounter with Jesus, he not only absolves you from your past, he rewrites your name. That's why it's so important to turn the page because if you don't turn the page, you'll never know that God has given you a new identity. If you don't turn the page, you'll never know that God has given you new purpose. If you don't turn the page, you'll never know that God has so much more for you. So the Bible said that God not only absolves you of your past, but he rewrites your name. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 17, it said this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, all things are made new. You can't experience newness if you're stuck on that chapter. Are you with me? Is this making any sense to you? You, 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 you can't experience the greatness of God if you are stuck at that last chapter in your life. If you're stuck there, then you can't get everything that God has for you. But, but when you do that, you allow God to reshape you and to remold you into who he wants you to be. That's why you cannot permit people, and don't miss this, you cannot permit people to hold your past against you. That's right. You cannot allow people to use your past to hold you hostage. When you surrender your all to Christ, you authorize him to become the author and the finisher of your faith. And so what he does is he rewrites your name in the Lamb's book of life. He rewrites your purpose and he gives you a new assignment. He gives you a new identity. He gives you a new agenda. Come here, Jacob. Your name shall be no longer Jacob, but 
But Israel, Prince of Peace. Everywhere you look in scripture, God is rewriting our identity. And you can only receive that when you get to the point in your life where you say, God, I no longer want to stay in this chapter of my life. I'm ready now to turn the page. So all you're doing is turning over the pen to Jesus. And now he's crossing out everything that you did, everywhere that you was, everything in your past. He's racing all of that. And now turning the page and giving you a brand new start. Are you with me? We need to let God become the author and the finisher of our faith. When you turn it over to him, he now is able to, to rewrite your destiny and place you on a path towards success and promise. Is it possible that the reason why you haven't achieved the level of success you're looking for is because you haven't turned your life over completely to God? Well, Pastor, you know, I came to church. I gave God my all. But no, look, the question is, what are you holding on to? See, because sometimes we hold on to things. And we don't realize those things are cancerous. We don't realize that those things are, are little, little, little mites that are just building up over time. See, see, the thing about cancer, and I work and a secular job in the cancer healthcare and industry. And I see all the studies about cancer and cancer always starts out as a small little thing. But what ends up happening, it starts to multiply because it's never addressed. So what are some of the things that you are holding on to in your life that you have not turned over to God? Because if you haven't turned it over to him, could you be setting yourself up for failure in the future? Because what's going to end up happening is you, your inability to turn it over to him is now going to cause the enemy to identify something in your life that is associated to him. And when he sees something that's relatable to him, all he's going to do is try to feed it. Because his objective is to allow that thing to supersede God's purpose, plan, and will for your life. But are you holding on to something that God said you should have dumped it a long time ago? Are you holding on to some things that should have had an expiration date long before now? Listen, the manifestation of God's promise in your life will never truly be revealed in your life until you are able to turn the page. As long as you stay where you are, you will never fully comprehend why God allowed you to go to that experience in the first place. You have to get to the place where you are able to turn the page on that last chapter in your life. Paul made a lot of mistakes in his life. He destroyed a lot of lives along the way, but he did not allow his past, and don't miss it, he did not allow his past to become a weapon that the enemy used to destroy his purpose. And what's happening is the enemy is using our past as a weapon to destroy our future. Because all he wants to do is bring it up before you. The Bible said that he is a what? He is a persecutor of the saints. The enemy is all the enemy wants to do is throw you on the wall and just have everybody look at you and see all your mistakes and see all your errors and see all your bad decisions and see all that. And he wants everybody to look at you with a big spotlight. But God says that, that if I have parted you from it, if I have erased it from your life, why are you allowing the enemy through people to hold you up on a wall as a displaced and a for sale sign? God said he wants to do so much more. So if you do not turn the page, you will never know why God allowed you to go through that season of your life for that purpose. You would never fully comprehend it. In fact, what he wants you to do, he's, he wants you to forget all those things in order for you not to be hindered 
in your efforts in further serving God. In the text, Paul says, this one thing I do, the word that comes to mind is resilient. Right? We saw the video. The one thing that comes to mind is resilient. Paul, he was driven. He was goal-oriented. He was committed to the task. He had one thing he wanted to do more than anything else. And watch this. He did not allow anything or anyone to stop him from reaching that goal. Who have you allowed to stop you from reaching your goal? Who have you allowed to become a stumbling block in your life? Who have you allowed to, to push you uh, where you step out of character? Who have you allowed to, to push you to the place where you no longer have faith in yourself? Who? Because can I submit to you? That if you had those people in your life, what do you need to do? You need to put an expiration date on those relationships and what? Turn the page. We also need to be like Paul. We need to be committed to all the passion and, and nurture all the things that God has placed in our lives in order for us to be able to fully support the purpose and the plan that God has made for us. Too often we start things in motion, but never complete them. Whether it's a new job, whether it's, it's a new relationship, whether it's educational aspirations, whether it's a new business, we start all these things in motion and we never ever see them to completion. We need to get our minds focused on nurturing the gifts, the talents, and the promises that God has already spoken and released over our lives. And stop spending time convincing yourself that you are not worthy to be at that level, or even worse, that you're not worthy of obtaining the favor that God has given you. Stop convincing yourself that. See, because you deserve everything that God has planned for your life. You've been through the challenges. You've been through the heartache. You've been through the struggle. You paid the price for everything that God has come in your way. Don't allow the enemy to make you think that you're not worthy of the reward that's coming to you. The Bible said that after you have suffered for a little while, God is going to allow you to experience the abundance and the favor that is associated with being a child of God. Don't let the enemy trick you into believing that your past has disqualified you from God's favor. Your past has not disqualified you. Your past has actually legitimized you. Who am I talking to? See, because your past was necessary for your future. So without your past, you would not have the skills and the ability to sustain the future that God is bringing you into. You got to get that. Your past was necessary for where you're going. And you got to think about our past. We don't like our past because our past is ugly. Our past looks horrible, but God is saying in the midst of your past, all he's doing is refining you, and, and it's like a chessboard. He is strategically positioning you for greatness. There's only one piece on the chessboard. And this is the crazy thing about any chess player. There's one piece on the chessboard that God just gave me this as I'm talking to you. It's a revelation. The pawn is the most powerful piece on the chessboard. What are you talking about, Pastor? The pawn is the only piece on the chessboard that can bring back every other piece. What am I saying to you? God is saying that he is positioning you like a pawn. And you may start out as a pawn. But when you get to where he's going to take you, you can be a king. You can be a queen. All God is saying is don't look at.
at where you are right now. Don't allow right now to be your indication of where you're going. Just say, God, as I move forward, I'm going to trust you. As I turn the page, God, I'm going to believe you for the impossible because I know that he who has begun a good work in me is faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So I may start out very low in my finance. I may start out with a low credit score. I may start out with just a few thousand dollars in my bank account. But if I stay committed to God's plan, if I stay focused on God's will, if I keep my eyes fixed on him, as I'm focusing on God and keeping my eyes fixed on him, as I'm moving, God is parting everything out of my way. All the hindrances, all the problems, God is moving out of your way and getting you to where you are now going to reign over everything. Are you with me? This story about Paul helps us to realize three things. The first is that we should never allow ourselves to get to the place where we believe that God will not sustain us during our trials and tribulations. You cannot be a believer and don't trust that God is going to sustain you during your trials and tribulations. Cannot. It is just not possible. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So God said that you cannot be as a believer. You cannot believe that God is not going to sustain you. The second thing is you cannot allow yourself to get to the place where you believe that your past is dictating your future. God is going to choreograph your life. And if God is choreographing your life, then you don't need to worry about whether or not you're going to get to that level you aspire for. Because if you are in his will, he's going to bring you there. And the last thing you have to be careful is that you do not allow the pains of your past to make you believe that you have not been marked for God's purpose. The Bible says that from the time that Jeremiah was in his mother womb, God mocked him and called him to be a prophet. Don't you know that you are not here by accident? There is a purpose for your life. There's a purpose for you being here. And God's preordained will will come to pass in your life. But you got to make sure that you are positioning yourself so that when it comes time for him to turn the page on that last chapter, you're able to turn the page. Turning the page on your life means that you have the courage to evict don't miss this. You have the courage to evict your past. That's what turning the page means. You have the courage to evict your past. You have the confidence that God will sustain you as he restores you. And then you are committing yourself to the necessary resources that will amplify and empower your life spiritually, emotionally, Mentally, physically, and economically. You're committing yourself to those resources. Turning the page doesn't mean that you are forgetting about what happened to you. Turning the page means that you are no longer authorizing the enemy to use that against you. I'm going to leave you with this. I'm going to let you go. There is life after failure. There's a story in the Bible where David lost everything while he was out battling. The Bible said that when the army came back, they saw that everything, wives, children, wealth was all gone. And David was there at a very difficult moment in his life, difficult juncture on his left and his right was figuring out what are we going to do David we went out battling with you what are we going to do and the Bible says that David inquired of the Lord 
And he said, God, shall I pursue? He said, you shall pursue. And I love this. Don't miss this. And he said, without fail, you shall recover all. What am I saying to you? There is life after failure. When you allow your life to completely be in God's hands, you're living according to the precepts and principles of scripture. You're living a life that is purposeful and driven towards God's will. As you go through, God is saying that you will recover everything that the enemy stole from you. Happiness is coming back. Peace is coming back. Prosperity is coming back. Wealth is coming back. Spiritual maturity is coming back. Joy is coming back. Healing is coming back. Restoration is coming back. Everything that you need from God, I decree and declare over your life that God said it's coming back. And as long as you stay fixed on Him without fail, you shall recover all. Everyone standing.